Deus. Ok? So let us start. So if I will be not clear, clearly seen, please tell me. So let me briefly remind what was last time, very briefly. So last time we considered natural operation, namely so-called shoot and break it, or just S bracket on polyvector fields. And we observed how this bracket is related to odd mechanics. So this odd mechanics is odd in both senses. So it's something very non-usual. So it was first thing. Second thing is we discuss the meaning of BV Laplace. BV Laplace was nothing like divergence of polyvector field and that's why it depends on the top form. You see, because of this dependence on the top form, it was missed in 50s. Okay. Once again, let me remind that the versions of the vector field is what we call the IVI. I put this in these marks. It's actually LV of omega divided by omega. So this thing has generalization. And this generalization could be obtained using differential, differential form forms, polyvectors, correspondence so you take polyvector that is pole polyvector you contract this polyvector with the, with the top form and here we have omega so here we have relation between a relation between polar vector and differential form that depends on omega top. We also discussed that this correspondence is nothing but 
od Fourier transform. So when you are doing Fourier transform, you need a measure. So that's why it depends on omega. Okay. And uh, in this correspondence, I'll write it here. There are differential goes to this Nabla Okay. Now, interestingly, even without Nabla you can do many things if you not just use this bracket, but write. So now I will I'll erase things. You can write many interesting things just working with this shortened bracket. In particular, very interesting thing is in such a question. And this is called classical master equation. of Batalin and Wilkins. Later, I'll explain why it's called classical. But here, I'd like to discuss a bit its geometrical meaning. So in ordinary mechanics, we have a phase space. Phi. And if we have Hamiltonian and the Poisson structure, we have the bracket. And the evolution of observable with time is given by so-called Poisson dynamics. Maybe it's better to write it like this. So this is Poissonian formulation of classical mechanics. So actually, this should be studied in the course of classical mechanics. However, when I was uh, studying at uh, Moscow Physical and Technical Institute, uh, we did not put, so professors did not put enough attention to this. What's interesting is that this is just H to the power of one expansion of Schrodinger equation. Is it clear why it is Schrodinger equation to the first order in H? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, great. So uh, we... But should, should, can I ask? Uh... 
uh, shouldn't we uh, change H and F in the bracket? Uh, it depends on how we define P, but uh, uh, usually I saw that uh, F and H uh, was uh, in different places, yes? F, F was the first and H was the second. Piles rise. But uh, it's convention, I would say. I actually see that it's kind of convention. Because, okay, so let us see. It comes from the... So well, let me try to get the proper sign myself. So we'll write the so-called Heisenberg equation. So it is F sub T. And the people do write it in this way. Now let us take derivative. And here we have minus I over H commutator of H and F. So, uh, so actually, it depends how you define commutator. You, you have to put I somewhere. So we, depending on I, you'll get minus or plus sign. So what is important here is that in classical limit, these two things commute. So one over H term drops away. So HF commutator actually starts with H Poissonian bracket plus H square terms. So when we divide over H, this H goes away. H plank goes away and we have this. Okay, but, but it's not the sign that's important. This dynamics comes from the vector field VH here. When VH is defined by its sectional functions, L of VH acting on F is HF. So such vector field preserves the bracket. And uh, people often say that, write it like this, that V is symbolically H with something. And in classical mechanics, you can consider any H. However, here, Somehow we have this condition. So we may ask, what is the meaning of this condition? And the meaning of this condition is that since in BV case, where we have poly vectors and not just functions on the cotangent bundle, this bracket is odd. So, so the vector field is odd. And it's interesting that for odd vector field, you can write down sensible equation. Namely, that this vector field is homological. LV square equals to zero. Vector field is homological. Uh, 
and this is equivalent to s s equal to zero. So this condition is the condition that vector field that is generated is homological. Okay. So, so what we are talking about, we are talking about the supermanifold. We can say that for the example that it would be PT, sorry, T shifted by one X. So that contains canonical symplectic form and therefore plasonic form that is called omega BB and S such that this S with this symplectic form generates the so called Q manifold. So Q manifold is nothing but a manifold equipped with this homological vector field. Note that the notion of Q manifold was missed by both French and uh, Russian schools. In 50s and 60s and 70s. So uh, French school missed the point that it is a manifold and not just a complex. Uh, while Russian school uh, introduced super manifolds, but they missed this vector field Q, homological vector field. So later on in 90s, I think in 90s, it was Kansevich and Schwartz who decided that it's better to have this pair. And that, that this is the proper object. So, in super geometry, uh, I will draw it and write it in the polite way. In super geometry, proper thing is super manifold and Q with condition Q square equal to zero. So, Batalian and Vilkovitsky said, let us add additional structure. And this additional structure is, you may say omega BV, that is symplectic, or it's inverse. This probably should be called PV. Such that LQ applied to omega equals to zero, or equivalently. LQ P equals to zero. So this additional, you may call it mechanical structure. Means that omega, sorry, that Q has Hamiltonian. So in mechanics we know that if the vector field preserves symplectic structure, it has Hamiltonian. But such fields are in mechanics are called Hamiltonian fields. Similarly, if, if, if it preserves Poissonian structure, it also has Hamiltonian. So in this case, we would specify 
of the data. So we have super manifold tilde. It's not that super manifold. Sorry, uh, sorry, but can we ask uh, what uh, does it mean? Uh, Li derivative of uh, p pi. Uh, pi is uh, by vector. Uh, it's tensor field uh, of. Uh, yes. Uh, so, so, so it's so it's important to know that Li derivative could be applied to any natural objects. Okay. In particular, Li derivative could be applied not only to vector, not only to functions. Li derivative could be applied also to vectors. Uh, yes, I, I understand how engineers do that, but <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I'm, so now I so I am explaining the general stuff. Okay. So, so 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 general stuff is as follows. So maybe you would like to know how Lie derivative acts on differential form in general. So it's your question. Oh, uh, we in, in, in which sense? In which sense? So do you understand how Lie derivative acts on differential forms? Uh, yes, yes, I understand. Ah, so your problem is to understand the how and in which sense Lie derivative is acting on. Uh, by vectors or oh, oh, yes, polyvectors. <laughs> so let us so let us do it this way. So maybe you know that let us start with vectors. That in vectors we may consider commutator. So this is a leave bracket. Okay, so this this defines an action on vectors, and from this you could guess the formula for polyvectors. Yes, yes, I, but, but, I but this is still engineer's approach. Let us do something more intelligent. Okay. So first of all. Suppose we have a manifold X and we have TX, okay? And actually we also, so we should also have T star X. Let me see. I am trying to figure out if the transport. So, so transport of vector field is natural. Okay. Maybe not this way. Maybe I'd like to do the to, to do the following. So poly vectors are sections of the tensor bundle to, to tangent plane. Okay. So say it's kind of a, it's some pair here, and just suppose. So this is the case for bivector. Suppose we have a diffeomorphism phi. Then diffeomorphism. Then diffeomorphism. Uh, naturally goes to to the sections of the vector bundle because it takes vectors here okay now suppose that this diffeomorphism depends on t and phi of t phi of t is generated by vector field v 
in sense that d phi over dt at zero is v. Okay, so vector field v is tangent to the femur. Then it acts at, at all vector fields and also at all polyvector fields. Okay, and this is exactly the lead derivative. So here we consider the lead derivative as an infinitesimal diffeomorphism. And everything that could be moved by diffeomorphism is moved by the vector field. And if you want to compute how vector field V moves vector field U, we will get exactly this formula. <coughs> okay. At the same time, it is possible to write down the explicit formula. And the explicit formula in in even case. <coughs> so it was geometry. Now easy formula. <coughs> if I have a vector field V and polyvector field pi, <coughs> then I can say that LV on pi equals to the Schutten bracket. <coughs> so this is a natural formula. And this is a natural geometric explanation. <coughs> okay. By the way, even this Schutten formula in the classical case has a natural interpretation in the case of classical mechanics, namely polyvectors are, oh, sorry, put it this way, symmetric polyvector, okay. So, um, you see, I, so, he, so no, I'm sorry. So, so it is actually shooting bracket. However, I cannot interpret it, I'm sorry, I cannot interpret it in terms of classical mechanics. The only way how I interpret it is, of course, classical super mechanics, where you need to see that Schutten bracket is actually odd. Because in, the, in this case, it takes vector, vector to vector. So vector has a grading like one. So it changes the grading. And that is quite interesting. So this thing could be understood only in BV mechanics. So in BV mechanics, polyvectors are functions on T star dot one X. T star means that uh, they take value on the cotangent vectors. T star one X has canonical 
So in practical form. And also canonical Poissonian form. Given by the pairing between tangent to X and tangent to T star. This form generate shoot on bread and that is actually odd. So when Schutten defined his bracket, he was not thinking if it's even or odd because he was writing formal just formulas. Now we understand it's odd. Because, because it changes the degree of polyvector. Okay? So degree of polyvector is a number of indices. So in this formula, there is differentiation. Because foot and breast actually contains derivative. Okay. And we may consider odd mechanics. So each polyvector could be considered as Hamiltonian. Okay. And then it generates the vector field. So then condition would be that we are interested in such Hamiltonians that generate homological vector fields. So I said the same thing from two sides. Here I started, started, started with the Q manifold and asked if this if this super if this Q manifold actually has Poissonian structure present. And here I started with a very specific manifold with symplex symplectic structure, and I asked if it has a uh, Hamiltonian that generates homological vector field. So it's the same. And here I took very particular uh, manifold, namely T star of one. And here I am not saying that it's T star, T star of X. I could uh, pick up any symplectic form. Okay? I, but I just wanted to be symplectic. It means that it is closed. And also, I want it to be preserved by the homological vector Q. Okay, so you may write it down yourself. So it's the best way to understand it. Okay, but all this was the classical story. Because it was classical mechanics. And then, Batalin and Wilkowski said, look, now let us try to write a quantum story for which this classical story would be just a uh, result of classical limit. And so they said, let us come to basics. and do the following. So it's hard to know how they guessed it, basically by analogy between classical mechanics and the odd mechanics. As I said, let us consider such an expression. 
So this S is a function and this S of H is a poly vector taking values in formal series in H bar. So actually they were trying to play Hamilton Jacobi game. Okay. So that's what they do. So in what I explained, these are poly vectors. However, you can also consider super manifold with a odd symplectic structure. Or more general, consider super manifold with odd symplectic structure, omega v. Now, they said the following. Let us write down the master equation. Now let's have a look on what do we have here. Sorry, can I ask? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, You're S very welcome to ask questions. Um, I didn't understand was or what S from H means. It it is. Uh, uh, I thought that uh, it is uh, like action in uh, in mechanics, but uh, yes, it is like action in mechanics. However, you see first, you see that it is, is that it contains H. Uh, Yes, uh, but why it is poly vector uh, taking values in formal One series? second. One second. So this S of H is a generalization of what we call action on mechanics. It's not an action on mechanics because this should be compared not with the mechanics but with quantum mechanics. Yes. And this is an, should be considered as an analog of Schrodinger equation. So in, in quantum mechanics, you may write down the wave function of the system. And if you are in the quasi-classical limit, then it starts with the action, but it also has H bar corrections. So by the way, this was uh, what uh, inspired Feynman to write down functional integral. So the formula for H tending to zero, not as a series, but the value of S at H where H equals to zero was known to be the action. In mechanics. Then Feynman said, let us take integrals, etc. We will come to this integral. But this has to be compared with this action in mechanics. However, with quantum corrections. So this delta BV is like. Hamilton Jacobi, like Hamilton Jacobi equations, however, corrected by H. So we will see how these equations are coming. But before we say this, this is Hamilton Jacobi equation. 
and then in, the, in classical mechanics, what you have here in classical Laplacian is metric. Okay. While here, this symbol, symbol depends just on Platonian structure or just by, by depends on omega BV or actually if we have not abstract supermanifold but T star of X, here we have uh, can canonical <coughs> for T star shifted X omega BV is canonical. And therefore, symbol is your symbol is uniquely defined so we have analog of of this gameton Jacobi equation we will have classical master equation. We will see this, yes? Yes, we'll see it in a second. Uh, but uh, my question uh, mainly was uh, why SH is polyvector? Uh, okay, it's because, po it's because polyvectors are functions on T star one of X. Um, okay. So once again, X has coordinates XI. T star has coordinates theta I that are odd. Or of opposite parity if X is a supermanifold. That then functions of X and theta are F I1 I n of X. Theta I1, theta I n. Sum over n, sum over i. So that's how polyvectors come up as functions. So it's better to call so this s of h is nothing but polyvector in this particular case. So I would prefer not to go into full generality. I would prefer to consider this model of. When this BV manifold is the star of one times that. Thank you. I see. Very good. Now it would be nice. Ah, now, before we differentiate, let us see that this thing has nice geometrical meaning. And this and its geometrical meaning is the following. So if we make Fourier transform of this to differential forms, then it will be derived. So this equation is nothing but of e to the s of h over h Fourier transform. And this is very natural because this is about topology. Okay. So the only crazy idea is look, you want to study closed differential forms. You think that it is about topology. However, if you are clever enough, to put dependence on parameter such that Fourier image has this strange form, you will get interesting theory. Okay.
Now let us see how it works. So now, after we understand the geometrical interpretation of it and realize that even before writing the equation, we know that it corresponds to, if you wish, cohomology of the RAM of the very special form of this form. We can start writing down equations. So, so since this is the second order operator, the result of this would be delta BV over S one over H plus one over H square. And here we will have this. So how do we actually get it? Let us make computation. Delta BV is D over DXI, D over D theta I. And let us apply it to S over H. It is. Let us take the first derivative. Ds over d theta i e to the s over h, one over h. Okay. Now I take the second derivative. And this second derivative could hit either here or here. So if, if it hits the first term, it's one over h d over dxi, d over d theta i, s. And this is delta b Plus another case is when d, this d over dxi hits here. And everything is multiplied by exponent of s over h, this equals to zero. So here we see BV bracket. And the second is, is of course, Schutten's bracket. So finally, finally, we are coming to equation. So you may call it BV or Schutten as the same. Maybe it's better to call it Schutten BV. Okay. So since we are considering formal power series in H, we come to the following equations. So first, let me denote S equal S naught plus H S one plus H square S two plus etc. Okay. So S naught is the value of S when H equal to zero. So let us plug it here. We will have a set of equations. So first equation is S naught S naught equals to zero. So this is what is called classical master equation that we discussed right now. With the meaning that this is a homological vector field, okay? 
Now let us look at the equation with the first term in H. What does this mean? So you may ask questions. You are very welcome to ask questions. It means. Uh, can you remind? Can, please, can you remind? Shoot and break it uh, defines like uh, you you had written on the desk. Yes, it's just uh, derivative by theta and derivative by x. Yes. Yes. And there is no sum. It is not. Uh, it is not like poison bracket, uh, but uh, uh, with. Uh, it is actually it is a leap Poisson bracket. Schutten bracket is uh, so, or you may say it is Poisson bracket on the on the tangent space, on the cotangent space. Yes, uh, but uh, so uh, shouldn't we write uh, 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 derivative by theta derivative by x uh, plus minus one in the in something? Uh, no, I, I, I mean, uh, shouldn't it be uh, uh, two, uh, two term? Two term, yes. No, no, because we have s here. If we, if we have the same s, and so, uh, and if you have the same s, if you interchange x and theta, you will get the same term. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, maybe there should be a a, a two. Uh, no, a factor of two. Okay, so uh, in this derivation, there is no factor of two. Ah, you mean between bracket and so how I defined it? But I may define bracket exactly in this way. Okay, so maybe there is a factor of two, honestly. So you want to say that vector field with, okay. I am not sure about factor of two. Okay. 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 So we, it depends on how we define two, should break it with a uh, uh, factor of two or without. Yes. Yes, but I prefer to define it like this. Okay. Okay, so, so here we have this equation for us not. Now it's instructive to study the equation for us not. So how can we get the first order term in H? It comes if we have S1 here or S0 here because of this H in front. So we have interesting equation. So maybe up to a factor of two. Sorry. This equation also has a nice geometrical meaning. So this meaning says, consider delta BV applied to S0. It's just divergence of polyvector. Then you are asking if it is Q exact. So the question is, if divergence of S0 considered as a polyvector, is exact. So this may be true, or the or it could be not true. 
However, what is interesting is that that this divergence, divergence of a smooth should definitely be a smooth closed. And it actually is, I would say. Note that delta BV of a snot is closed with respect to, to this vector field. So it's very easy to show it for the case, I'll show it only for the case when S not corresponds to a vector field, not to polyvector. Okay. Let us see. So let S not be theta i v i of x, okay? So what is delta b v of s naught? It's a divergence of the vector field. So it is actually L v of omega naught over omega naught, sorry, omega top. How can we rewrite it symbolically? We can rewrite it symbolically as LV of log omega top. So, so symbolically. Okay. However, this V is actually full homological vector field. So would it be not symbolic notation? The, we will get that log of omega top is what we are looking for. But this notation is symbolic because there is no such thing as a logarithm of the top form. However, locally it's like this. That's why actually we do have closeness of the of divergence. But if it's really exact, had to be checked. Okay. Then maybe you will ask, do we have nice examples? Simplest examples where this phenomena doesn't happen, where uh, everything uh, ends at the level of S, of S naught. And I can bring you this example. And this is the simplest anomaly. So anomaly. Class of S, or class of delta BV of S naught in what? In S naught dot cohomology. Okay, so that's what anomaly is. Mm. I think I made a mistake, not in writing. I, I made a mistake in recording. I have not uh, switched to the high quality mode. 
By the way, how do you see me? Uh, I see good, good enough. Okay. okay, but not great. So what do you mean okay, but not great? I can see the, your symbols. You can or cannot? I can. Okay. So I'm going to switch the video mode. Okay, so now we work for one hour. We need to have a five minutes break. Okay. Okay.
Ok. So I am back. So you may ask questions. On the, everything that you have here. At least I don't hear you. Artyom, if you are talking to me, yes, you may go to tell us. Ah, what I can do. Oh, a lot of questions. So let's just discuss questions. We are just discussing. Um... How we get uh, Laplace formula uh, by uh, from divergence of uh, polyvector field? So um, okay, so let us repeat it. So how to get Laplace from divergence? So first, you need to know that. Delta BV is D over DX I D over D theta I. It's not a, it's not a standard Laplace. It's BV Laplace. Uh, yes. So please note that for vector fields, it's a divergence. So we write vector field V as VI of X theta I and apply this derivative kills theta and we will get dvi or dxi and that's what people call divergence yes uh, the only question was uh, how we have defined uh, a delta B V uh, through divergence. Divergence. Ah, so actually, we define delta B V in the following way. So we take Fourier image. So, so the natural thing, canonical, is the RAM. Psi i d or the x i. Now we take top form. That identify differential forms and uh, that identify differential forms and polyvectors. And then so this identification is exactly the odd for the odd Fourier transformation. So, so D D RAM okay is acting on forms. So now let us take a differential form. And let us make this natural Fourier transformation. Sorry to say. Here I put psi i theta i, upper index, lower index. So canonical construction. And then we try to integrate our psi. However, this depends on omega tau. <coughs> the measure on psi. <coughs> So when we do this transformation, then D of omega goes to some D Fourier on its image. And this image is a polyvector field. And D Fourier transformed is exactly BV thing because multiplication by Psi i 
goes into the derivative of a theta. So it's a property of Fourier transform. Ah, okay. So it's a property of Fourier transform. Now, now is it clear? Uh, it is not clear what is DF uh, is. Oh, for, so it is for yet, okay. So, so we have an operator acting on function or acting, acting on function. Yes. So like uh -huh. compare, like an ordinary life. Life. We have free transform. So we have a function of x, and we go to the function. So how we would written in calculus. Fourier transform. Then d over dx on f goes to p times f of p. That's how we are solving differential equations. And similarly, x times f of x goes to d over dp, f of p. So do you understand this? Yes, it is clear. OK. Now I'm doing the same here. Yes, by the way, if there is an operator, not just one derivative, but operator acting on the left, it goes to the operator acting on the right. Yes, yes. In particular, what we have here operator d over dx squared, it will go to p squared and vice versa. Because there is an inverse for it. Now, We call this Fourier image of the operator. So we only ask, what is the Fourier image of the RAM? It is Laplace BV. Yes, it is Laplace BV. But it is only Fourier image on uh, odd, odd coordinates, yes? Yes. Fourier image, we are doing Fourier image in the fiber. Okay, now I see. Okay. So you may consider this as a definition. And then you may say, ah, okay, it is, it is the RAM but on polyvectors. So why did so why did we did such a strange thing? Going from nice the RAM to this guy. And the explanation is is because uh, we are looking at the very specific formulas for the expression here that are s over a and s of h over h so it's actually very specific now now we are trying to find the h corrections and I somehow told you that H corrections, so you, you, you can compute them iter iteratively. So in particular, S1,
So what is this one? It was written here. So I'm coming again to this equation. This we know. We need to find this one. So what is the meaning of S1? Let me tell you what the meaning is. Okay, so let us discuss. What is the meaning of S1? Note that S1 goes to H at h to the first. So in the expression u of s over h, so we can rewrite it like this, e to the s0 over h. And here we have s1 without h. And here we have higher terms x times s2, etc. So e to the s1 would stand in front of the measure if we are going to do functional integral with it. At the moment, we don't need to, don't want to do it, but eventually we would. So let us try to consider example. Let a zero be a vector field. So, so it should be something like this, V i theta i. Okay. So what is the Laplace BV applied to such a test node? It's the IVI divergence. Now, what what does this mean? It means that What? It means that we need to study this equation. Okay, I'll write it as diversion sheet. So this is a function. This is a vector field. It's clear, that, it's clear that this is also a function. On, on the base, on X. So let us study the meaning of this function. So here, so we may write left hand side L S L V times S1. On the right hand side, we have L V omega top divided by the omega top. Now we start to see something. That this condition means that consider omega top 
e to the catch one. And let us apply LV to it. It would be bring us LV omega top e to the S1 plus omega top. We can apply it here LV of S1 e to the S1. Let us cancel e to the S1. And we will see up to the side. So if I put here a minus sign, I will have a minus sign here. We will see that omega top times e to the minus s1 is preserved by the vector field V. So S1, S1 is the ability to create from omega top differential forms, form that is preserved by Q, by, by commutator with a stop, sorry. What I'm saying is not very easy to see. However, it's true. Okay. So you may compute this and go on. Okay. Now, now I still want to show you an example. A finely dimensional example where cohomology appears. So let us consider X as having coordinates X, X bar, and uh, and uh, C. I would like to take it without ending. So it's a billion example. Then on T shifted by one X. It has coordinates X I, X bar I, C, theta I, theta bar i bar and then some something called c star so i'd like to take x even and then I'd like to take c being odd And I'd like to propose such vector field. So this seems to be like Euler vector field. Okay, let me, maybe I'll, I don't need X bar. So this is an Euler vector field. And it's multiplied by C. So this is odd vector field. Let, let me call it Q, such that Q squares to zero. Now let me compute the versions of S0. This is easily computed as C times dimension of X. Okay. 
then we want to see if such divergence could be as not applied to something. And this is expected to be a function. So we have some function of x, and we apply to it c x i d or d x i. And what was uh, s not in this example? This one. Quadratic vector field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Q, Q is uh, S not is equal to Q actually. So, so, so Q is a vector field. Is what that's, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. But actually, uh, no, S not. So this is a vector field on the base. This vector field mm -hmm. on the base could be lifted to the mm -hmm. function on the total space. And mm -hmm. from this, uh, we find we find Q. So again, mm -hmm. let me explain it again. Yeah, let us consider this example. So we have C C sum over I X I D over D X I. So it corresponds. To the action as not equals C X I theta I. Then not left B B applied to it. It differentiates here and here. It's just C times the dimension of bosonic part. Of x. Okay. X part. So it's some number that is definitely on zero. This is proportional to C. Now let us see what is. S not applied to S one. This is a function of X. Clearly, it is C times what? Times X I D S one or D X I. However, you cannot find S one such as that it would be a constant. Because you need to say that S1 is log of X. So it's no good change of, uh, of coordinates. Because we are not allowing logarithms. So that's how it goes in one dimensional case. So this value, no, not this value, the value of Laplacian VV on S1 for the zero is anomaly. Okay. So we actually can find the analog of anomaly here. Now. Now I'm trying to consider this theory very seriously, and there are reasons for it. In particular, using this for year, I will prove, I will show you the proof of one of the formulas that I like. Uh, maybe not yet, not yet, we will come to it. So this is BV integral classical quantum master equations. 
I still need to explain one last ingredient in the story. You see, so I propose the following. Maybe we will stop here today at that moment because we, we naturally came to the long piece. And uh, we have to keep in two hours. Well, we can stop, yes, but we can continue. <laughs> we, we, we would continue. Um, so, so let me first summarize. So what we did today, we discussed classical and quantum master equations, okay? Their meaning. We stressed on anomaly. You may ask why it is anomaly, because you don't see how S0 appears in physics. So tomorrow we will study BV integral, and you will see that this S may be considered as effective action in examples. Effective action depends on Planck constant, because there are loop, loops that uh, there are taking part in effective actions, in effective action. So actually, this is the origin of this H. But in order to understand this, I need to explain more about so-called BV integral. Okay. So I think I may stop here, but I'm going to answer your immediate questions. So why, um, maybe I missed something, but why in physics uh, we are interested in BV? Ah, so I, I, I'm coming to it. Okay. At the moment I said that this BV is such an interesting thing that many equations mm. have the form of uh, classic BV. So, oh, so I don't see the screen. Ah, now I see it. Okay. And uh, tomorrow, when we will study BV integral, you would see the physics. Okay. Uh, I promise. Tomorrow. Or uh, no, 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 no. next week. Uh -huh. So is the time convenient for you? Uh, yes. And what about you, Pavel? And for me too. Okay. So I'll ask our American friends why they missed today's session. Okay. Okay. And by the way, BV is important in so-called tau theory, but uh, it's another story. Interesting. By the way, people are divided into two camps. People who know and like BV and people who refuse BV, to use BV. So the border is the border between the United States and Canada. So people in Canada like BV, but if you cross the border, no, they don't like BV at all. Okay, so now let us Finish, or maybe yeah, you have questions. I have a comment about time. Uh, in all the emails, it's written 2 p.m. New York time, but it's actually uh, 12 p.m. 
So if you if you see there is a there is a, oh, uh, there is a mistake in in timing. So I just calculated well, with respect to Moscow. Oh my time, but... Okay. Ah, that's, 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 that's why Americans didn't come. Maybe it's the reason. It might so be. You see, with this twelve and this eight. So I, I, I added, the email it is two. Yeah. I added to two this eight. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's actually right. Okay, I see. So I think that that we will do it this way. You may leave, okay? And uh, I will have to give another talk. Okay. okay. <laughs> Just tell them that it's because, over. <laughs> because, uh, because clients had to satisfy, okay? It couldn't be that somebody log in and uh, there is no talk. It's uh, it's impossible. Okay, well, thank you, Olga. You're welcome. So, uh, hopefully they would not come. By the way, a Russian title is correct, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how would it be? It is eight. Ah, eight Russian. Okay, eight p.m. Russia two. So I consider this it's at S twenty. Okay, yes, miscalculation. Okay. So please keep the record. Yes. Um. <laughs>